So it's official, we are in bear market territory. Now in this video today, I'm gonna to provide everyone with an update of my account and my current outlook on the market. So I have the S&P 500 graphed on my screen. It's the Vanguard ETF. And this is just one of many ETFs which have had significant losses in recent times. We can also see a lot of red in my portfolio, a lot of minuses, and a small number of pluses here and there. But right now I have a negative 15% loss in my portfolio, and that equates to around just under £500. So that is the state of my portfolio right now. A lot of red, a lot of negative values. But the question is, how concerned am I? So when you see a lot of red in your portfolio, you can see that the capital losses are relatively significant. And so for individuals that just focus on capital gains, the swing traders out there especially, there is no motivation other than to make a profit. And so if your account is positive, you have a feeling that you've done well for the day or you've done well for the week. And if you exit out of those positions and you make a profit, then you feel good. Now, unless you are shorting the market, which just means that you're betting that a given company will decrease in value, then you're not going to make a profit in the event that a stock price drops. So the question that I ask myself is, with a lot of negatives listed within my account, how concerned do I feel with my current portfolio and the types of stocks that I've picked? So I mentioned in a previous video that there's always improvements to be made with respect to the stock choices and the ways to mitigate against other downturns in the market in the future. But aside from that, we have to understand as dividend investors that we have the motivation of tracking our dividends. And so unfortunately with trading 212, it doesn't have a nice breakdown with dividend payments. Now it's definitely possible to view on your account summary of the history of dividends paid out, but there's no graph in to show you that progress. Instead, all you see is a lot of negative on the results section and on the mobile app, you can actually see your percentage decrease. And that is why I track my dividend payments every month. So I have a standard Google spreadsheet. I just track the portfolio value for a given month and the amount of dividend received for that given month. Now, although I started my investment journey with respect to trading 212 in August, I actually switched over from the invest account to the ISA account. And so I just ignore the invest account when it comes to the portfolio value and the dividend payment for the month. But looking at the graph here, we can see a slow but uh, certainly increase in dividend payment month by month. And of course, there's going to be fluctuations. And it's definitely early days right now. But for me, this is enough motivation to look at the increase in dividends compared to the account losses that I have with respect to the different companies that I invest in. Now for long term investors that don't plan on selling out of positions, we really don't have to worry ourselves with respect to our capital decreasing. When we think about the stock exchange market, we have investors from across the board, whether they're a swing trader, where they buy and sell quickly, long term investors, and a whole range of others that have their own tactics when investing in the stock market. So at times, Sometimes when there is panic selling and when we enter a downturn or bear market territory, we have the benefit as dividend investors to buy stocks that are listed at a lower price than they were previously. And for the same amount of money, we can buy more of that given stock. So given that I will not sell any of these stocks unless there's a significant drop in the dividend payments, it doesn't concern me that the stock price is dropping. Of course, it's natural to log into your account see a bunch of losses and wonder when the numbers will go less and less. But I recommend anyone who does focus primarily on dividend investment that they track those profits month by month just to help with your motivation. And so I mentioned in the previous video last week, but just to have everything consolidated within this video, most of the companies that have decreased is all surrounding the global epidemic which is that of the coronavirus. And there's many businesses that are directly impacted. If we take a look at some of the airline companies, we've got Ryanair, for instance, 
which is being absolutely hammered right now. And that makes sense because they are a company which requires consumers to physically be onboarded on planes, and the airline has to be able to fly the customer to a given destination, generally within another country. And so with the lockdown that we're seeing with many countries all over the world, it becomes very difficult to fly. A lot of the times flights are cancelled before departure and that is directly impacting the likes of the airline industry. On the other hand, there's other companies which are less impacted. If we look at the likes of Walt Disney, of course the market has reacted negatively and the price has been decreasing as a result. Now the primary factor there is that some theme parks have been closed and so of course revenue will be decreased as a result and that affects investor confidence. And no doubt we can find examples of other companies that are not directly impacted by the virus. I'm sure there's a lot of companies that sell toilet roll that are doing very well these days. But for the most part, when we invest into companies, we have to realise that they are real entities. They directly impact consumers. And so if you have a situation where individuals are locked down, they are less able to use a given service and it naturally impacts the company. Now I can continue talking with respect to the UK with some of the very strange decisions made from government and other decision makers, but I'll probably save that for another video. So during this period, I have been adding more money into my portfolio, and as I continue to buy more stocks that have been impacted by the current epidemic, I've been able to buy stocks at a much cheaper rate, even though I have seen this live result figure, which is my capital losses, but I haven't been phased from buying more and more. And so no doubt there's individuals out there that focus on buying and selling a lot faster than I do. And so there's been a well-known term in the industry, which is referred to as trying to catch a fallen knife. So actually, if you go on to Investopedia, there's a whole article based on this. I'll supply it within the description. But effectively, all it says is that when a market is in a bear market that continues to drop, then you can't predict when the price is going to bounce back. Now, of course, you can look into different technical analysis tools, and that's perfectly fine. I have no issues with that. But for individuals that try to make a quick profit from the capital gains, most of the times they have struggled to find what is known as the bottom, which is just the lowest point at that given period until it becomes a bull market which is in an upward direction. And so the term just comes from real life where if you drop a knife and you try to catch it, probably nine times out of ten you're gonna cut yourself in the process. And so the action of trying to grab the knife and the outcome of cutting your hand and bleeding, that is no different from investing into companies on a downward direction and just seeing more and more red within your portfolio. So people may question, why do I continue to add more funds into my portfolio when the price is dropping? Well, simply put, as a long-term investor and one that focuses on dividends, generally speaking, when a stock price decreases, you're paying less. And so the payment that you receive, the dividend yield each year, technically increases in value because the stock price has become less, it's on sale, and your money is worth more. And of course that assumes that the company doesn't actually slash their dividend prices. But what it means is that I can just buy more of the stock. It doesn't matter if I buy into the company at this point. It doesn't matter if I buy at the rock bottom price. Because although it's very difficult to know when the bottom is, and each time the stock price keeps on dropping, you still don't know where the bottom lies. And you can do as much technical analysis as you like, but during volatile times, it's no different from trying to predict a stock price for a cryptocurrency, which, as everyone knows, is extremely volatile as well. So the mindset for long-term investors is that it doesn't matter if you buy right at the bottom. You may miss your opportunity if you try to hold out for too long. And in either case, if you brought a company that you were happy with when the price was higher, it means that you can hold more of that given stock at a lower price because you believe in the fundamentals of the given company. So that's been my approach today, looking at companies that have been most impacted 
trying to understand how badly the given company is affected by the current market condition, whether the company will be impacted by higher level decisions or not, and then just dollar cost averaging into those respective markets. And I try to distribute the same amount of money into each of those companies. Now, if I was a robot, the game plan would be completely different. So the robot version of me would look into the most impacted company, i.e. the company with the biggest loss. And I can tell you these days it's been World Tower. And I would simply dollar cross average into that one company. And until the loss becomes the second lowest or even higher, then I would move on to the next company, which in this case is Main Street Capital and so forth. But the reason why I look into a range of different companies is because... If I've analysed the company incorrectly and they are more vulnerable by the current market conditions, then I've set myself up for further failure. And so I spread the risk looking into a multitude of companies which are in the red by a high amount. But I also look at other companies and at the time we had Realty Income. I brought a few more shares because the price point was really nice at the time. It was a company that in my view isn't badly impacted due to the coronavirus. And so it was great buying opportunity. So these are the different behavioural kind of decisions that we are free to make and there is no right or wrong answer and everyone is free to try different investment styles and i'm very curious to hear what other people are doing so feel free to leave a comment below and describe what different approaches you've been taking and with that said i'll catch you in the next one